Okay. And oops, it's going to be at the beginning. Okay. Julie, are, can can you see the screen? The uh, yes, okay. I see your first slide. Okay. So um, again, so this is a, um, a workshop on basically creating videos for your folio courses. Okay, and um, what we're going to go over basically these three objectives. Actually, really the first two. The third one is really just for you to you can uh, practice um, at your home or when you get back to your office. Um, actually, before we start, we've all, uh, we've made sure that everyone has um, a, a sandbox course. Um, if you want to go ahead and follow along you, and, or you want to practice while you're doing it. If you don't know what a sandbox course is, it's a, basically it's an empty blank shell um, that is in folio. And again, this is what you can use to, um, you know, to actually practice in and to find it. If you're not aware, what you can do is if you can see up here with this little grid, if I select that and if you put your first and last name in like this and then say sandbox, oops, and then you click the magnifying lens you'll see this you'll see this co this course should pop up and if you click this little uh, push pin to the um, right so that it's dark then that'll keep it on your main screen when you when you first enter so you don't have to keep searching for it so um so that's if you want to follow if you want to just follow along and take notes um, but if you want to also take a look at maybe do, you know, you know, try a few things while we're talking, you know, that's fine. Um, so what you want to do is basically talk about the different types of capture, capturing software programs that are basically the easiest to learn and can be used for putting in your, your course in Folio. Um, there's three that we're going to be talking about. Um, the main one is Kaltura because this is one that is a free course that is a free software which is built into Folio. Um, so I don't know if anyone has used Kaltura yet, um, but one of the nice features that we've within the last year that we've been able to access or use is the quiz question feature. So you can, and we'll show you how that works, but we can um, add four different types of questions added to a video, a screencast video or whatever. And that can be used for like a self-test or even, you know, if you want a test that is counted towards a grade. Um, and also added to within the last month, a recent feature of the quiz question feature is, is, in, is analytics that you can actually find what, how the students are responding, not just the grade, but also how they respond, like in a short answer um, question or whatever. Um, hey, Stephen, mm -hmm? there's a question. Okay. Um, can you enlarge your screen or how? Sure. Can... And let me do that now. Let's see if I. Um, let's see if I can. Is that at all better? Let's see. Barbara, is that better? And also, if there's any problems with the sound, please type in the chat. I can see if I can get it a little. It's built inside. This is a PDF, which is inside. Let me see if I can make it. And Lee said, is there a full screen button at the bottom? Oh. Lee Padgett. Yeah. Let Do me you see. have your window, your browser window enlarged to full um, size? 
And Vivian says three dots at the bottom. You can select full screen. Oh, okay. Let's see. Well, how's that? Okay, let's better. see. Yep, that looks better to me. If okay, anybody me has comments. Or, yep, Vivian says it's better. Okay. Thank you. Very Steve. good. Thank you. No, I appreciate the the comment. You know, that's a, okay. Um, and before we actually get involved with the actual physical thing of creating the, you know, the videos, um, I just wanted to show you some of the benefits that you might be able to use videos in your courses. And again, I can share this PowerPoint with you if you'd like. I can send it out to the people. If you share your um, email address in the chat box, I, we can, I can send it out, send this out to you. But these are some of the things that can be, you can use these videos for the benefits, um, it, you know, both facilitating the thinking and problem solving can help master ma help with mastery of learning inspire and engage your students um, develop more learner autonomy and delivering authentic learning opportunities within the course um, for students they can provide a more engaging experience than just text-based material um, we all know about that there are mm -hmm. visual learners and audio audio learners and um, you know the and other types of learners. So videos can be a great benefit for especially the the visual learner. Um, they can provide a go to resource that can be watched from anywhere. And again, this is an advantage to um, using Kaltura because these videos can become can become accessible to uh, even on a tablet or on a um, on a cell phone. Um, they can increase knowledge retention, and assist in the learning of all different types of subjects, and increase your digital literacy and communication. And again, for teachers, for the instructor, again, basically similar and can increase your student engagement gives you greater flexibility in, in your course. Um, the use for, I don't know if anyone has used a flipped classroom um, in, their, in their teaching, but this allows, um, you can prepare your video beforehand, have students review it, and then they can come into the class the next day. So not just for online courses, but in your face-to-face -face courses. Um, uh, many videos can, can, can now contain analytic features. Again, this is especially true of Kaltura. Um, they can provide opportunities for student feedback and assistance. And this is a, an interesting one that videos can change the role of teachers from lecturers to facilitators. So if you've prepared a video um, already as part of your lecture, sort of a screencast video, then you can you're not actually there teaching it. The content is already there, OK? And again, these are just basically some of the options for creating screencast lecture videos. The main thing is to look for low expense. Free versions are available. Um, make sure that they're relatively easy to use and that they have a reasonable learning curve. Um, the one video software that we're not going to cover is Camtasia. Number one, it's expensive, um, and there is a fair learning curve related to that. So the ones that we're talking about today are basically those that are um, that are free and relatively easy to use with just a little bit of practice. Okay, and then these are the video programs. We're going to start off with Kaltura, which is built into Folio. Um, Screencast-O-Matic, you might have already be using this, but there's a free version, um, which allows 15 minutes of screen capture. Um, if you, a paid version, and they do have an educational version that you could pay for, for a nominal fee, but that expands the amount of time that you can record. But 15 minutes is a really good, is a fairly reasonable time. And then there's this uh, Screencastify. Um, 
and I've not used this as much, but it's basically for, um, it's an extension for a Chrome browser. So you actually have to install it on a Chrome browser. And we can just show you if we have time at the end, what that looks like. Um, and um, it basically allows you to record very similar to Screencast-O-Matic, okay? So, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I have another question. Can Kaltura be used by students? Yes, they can. And that's one of the good things about Kaltura. You know, I've worked with some faculty that they are using Kaltura for students to create. Um, one is a, in a speech class, you know, uh, in a communications class. And so they're going to record themselves and then they can post that video either as part of a Dropbox assignment, or you can actually post it in um, a discussion forum if you want students to review and allow them to look at it. So yes, it is a really, that's one nice thing about, um, you know, about Kaltura is, is that students have access to that. And again, it's a, it's a, you know, um, it's a fairly straightforward program to use, just takes a little bit of practice, okay? And again, these are just the resources that I'll share at the end. But so let's go to my, I'm gonna go to my uh, course and, okay. And I'm in my sandbox course again, you know, we mentioned on how to actually find your own uh, sandbox. Um, to find the use of Kaltura on the upper level of um, links, normally it's right around here, but now we've added, a, they must have added, well, the Zoom online rooms is new, but if you look down here, that might be under more, there's this option for my media. It could be your my media might be part of this upper upper level, but for me it's under the more category. So I check off my media. Okay. Now you're gonna see this is along the left hand side. These are videos that I've created mostly as a demonstration. Um, the first time that you open this you're obviously not gonna have any videos along the side. This is, will become your library of videos, okay? Um, the very first time that you use my media, uh, the Kaltura, under add new, you're gonna have to select this option of Kaltura personal capture. And when I select that, you're gonna see this screen for me, because I've already downloaded, it's a software program that you need to download. This is now opening the main toolbar for Kaltura. I'm gonna move this out of the way. But for those who have not used it, for each computer that you, you would do, just do it once, whether you have a Windows computer or a Mac, you would need to select to download. You select save the file and it, it'll probably save it to your downloads folder and you need to go through the install process. So I don't know if anyone is doing this now or if they're just following along, we can just wait a minute if they're in the process of, is anyone trying this, um, the downloads at this point? Steve, I have a question while mm -hmm. we check. Um, so the question is, those videos that were listed on the previous screen, are those mm -hmm. your videos for the one course that you're in now or for all of the courses? That's for all the courses. So even if I, so this is in my sandbox, you know, which you could have a sandbox course, but say if I was in a different course, and then we just find another course of mine that I'm in. Um, okay, this is, the spring teaching online course that just finished up. But if I go to more, my media, the same videos are gonna populate right here. And so one of the things that I recommend is that when you give a, when you create your video, 
that you title them to something specific so that you know what course it's for. This is a very generic name, but you may want to call it like English, you know, 1101 um, introduction, something like that. You know, give it a title um, and you're given the option to make those title changes. But this becomes, this becomes all the videos that you've created, not just specific to the one course that you're in. Okay. So let me go back to the, my sandbox course. Um, okay. And I'm going to go back to my media. Okay. So once you've downloaded the software, the next time that you do select the add new and add and do the Kaltura personal capture, you're going to have this screen um, toolbar right here, which is a very basic one. And it, there's um, four different options. The first button right here is to start the recording. But before you do that, there are three different options here. This is for your camera. So if you have a web camera set up, okay, you would leave this selected. Okay, so it's in blue. You want to leave that selected. The next one is for the screen. So you can capture, if you have a PowerPoint lecture that you want to do a voiceover, um, if you have a website that you're capturing that you want to talk about, um, you can do that, okay? And then the third one is for audio. This one is always selected, you know, because you want to make sure you have audio. Um, but say if you just wanted to do a video of yourself doing an introduction to a course or um, maybe like a little mini lecture or an announcement, if I click that screen, you can see that it now has a cross, you know, a cross through it. So now only this, the, the webcam is going to be recorded. If I put that through the camera, now only my screen is going to be recorded. Okay. Steve, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, another question. Lee Padgett asks, if you link a video into a course, will it follow when you copy that course to a new semester? not resulting in a broken link? You know, that is a good question. It is. Um, I'm, you know, um, oops, I think no. we need to, you know. Um, and another question is, can the videos be downloaded? Yes. I think you're gonna cover that. Yes, I'm gonna cover video download, okay. Um, so I just try and remind me about that. I will, I will. Um, I'll jot that one down. Okay. And the other option, which one faculty used, is they cut off both of these and they just did an audio. So they did like a podcast. So she just created an audio um, recording. And so you can do that if you want. Okay. So, but if you have both of these, so if you have all of these selected, you're actually going to be recording both what's on your webcam and on the screen. And it, you'll have a picture in picture so that students can actually alternate back and forth between one or the other. The only down, uh, downfall to this is that you don't get to pick, you can't pick which is the primary video and which is the secondary video. So that's only done, you know, by clicking back and forth within the video itself, you know, and if we have time, we can show you that. But it is a nice way if you want to be able to have, talk about your screen and then have a little video of yourself in the corner, um, you can do that. But then students will be able to switch back to a full screen of yourself with a little image of the video, okay? Um, I wish there was a way of creating you know, choosing which is the main video, but right now that's not that's not the case. Okay, um, so let's go, and I'm going to open up, and let's see. I'm going to make sure this is correct. Camera, the screen is correct, and so I'm going to go ahead and select 
to start the recording. It gives you a countdown. Okay, and it said it failed to start recording. Okay. There's the screen. The camera isn't. Let's see if the integrated camera is going to. Oh, there, there, there's the countdown. Okay, so you can see for some reason it didn't work on the first, but here you're getting um, this little toolbar here, which shows you how, how it's recording. You have the option of pausing it. So say if you want to, you know, stop and recollect your thoughts and make changes, then you can restart it again. Okay. Um, this little pencil here gives you the option. It has, it gives you sort of like a white screen kind of tool thing that you can choose. Um, this pencil is for drawing, so you can choose to circle things or underline things. You can change the color. Um, there's an arrow feature that if you want to point to something in spe specifically, you have a text option. So if you wanted to um, type something in, and that's kind of hard to read because it's in yellow, but again, you can change the text to black or whatever. So that's a nice feature. This is a select to allow you to move things around. Okay, you can move that. Um, and then the wastebasket if you want to clear things off. But all of this, all of that that I just did is being recorded. Um, then I choose to say stop the recording. And I give you a warning, are you sure you want to stop it? And I'm going to say yes. Okay. And you'll get a little message. I don't know if you can see up there recording. And this is where I think you might want to record the title, you know, it gives you a default name called Kaltura capturing the date and the time. But this is where you may want to change it to, you know, something like whatever history, you know. So this is, you know, um, and you may want to give it a date, you know, so that you know, um, you may want to say summer 2020. So this is where you can uh, you can choose to give a description um, tags if you want to put certain words in so that it's um, it can be found. But it will actually create tags on its own. Um, there are three options down here. You can choose to delete it if you choose not that you don't want it anymore. Um, the main one is to save and upload. Save and upload brings the video up to the Kaltura server. It's a cloud server, and that allows you to share into your course. Okay, so you can just save it, and I believe that that just really saves it locally. It does not allow you to save the course to be able to share it. So if I do save and upload, okay, and here's a little, I don't know how easy this is to see, it's a small progress bar that's now uploading the files. It's now 23% and it'll just keep going. Um, the longer your video, the more longer this will take to upload, okay? Stephen, a question. Is there a best practice for the length of a video for use for instructional purposes? Yeah. Um, well, for an introductory video for like a course intro or maybe like a module intro, if you're going to do that, um, I wouldn't go more than five minutes. You know, two to three to five minutes is really good. If you're doing sort of like a mini lecture, um, that might be content related, 
you know, you could probably go a little bit longer. I don't think I would go more than like eight to 10 minutes. You could do a little bit longer, but if your video is longer than that, I know some faculty might want to record an hour long video. Um, that's a little bit long for one as a person to sit through. And generally the best practice is to kind of chunk the video into sections that um, where it makes logical sense to break up and you could call it part one, part two, part three. And that allows students to just to be, be able to follow along for a certain period of time and then choose to go back at a later time instead of writing down where they, like the time code where they stopped. Um, so I think it's a good idea. What, do, Julie, do you think, what is your thoughts on length of time? I mean, um, yeah. My thoughts for an introduction video, I would say one to three minutes. One to three minutes. Yeah. Um, and then, like you said, that, that once you start talking more about Kaltura, I like the idea of recording um, lectures using Kaltura, and you can insert questions throughout the lecture. And that's what you're going to talk about in a little bit, right, mm -hmm. Steve? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is now, this video is uploaded. For, um, I'm going to click this and actually here are the two it doesn't look like it recorded my my camera video for some reason so there might be some weird connection but you can see the screen down here but what I'm gonna do is again you have the option to start a new recording um, but what I'm gonna do is go to let me refresh the screen and here's that video um, that I just recorded. And for some reason, it I guess, the, I don't know why the camera, the webcam didn't record, but here's where you could see that this video is now listed as being private. So that means that it is not being used in any course and that no one can see it but yourself, okay? Um, this down here, this video where it says published, this means that it's actually been added to a course in Folio. Okay, um, and so, and that change is automatic. Once you add that video to a folio course, it becomes um, part of, it becomes published, okay? Um, it doesn't mean that that's available to the entire Kaltura wor you know, world. It just means that anyone who has access to your course can actually see that video, okay? Um, so let's go, I'm gonna now click, the link right next to the video, I'm going to click that, okay, okay, so you can see here's this picture in picture, this is the screen capture, and this is the, the webcam, which didn't get recorded, this would have been from my webcam, would have been um, coming from my, uh, um, from my camera, um, you have kind of up here, I don't know how it's kind of faint, you have options, you can just do full screen for that. You can do a side by side so that students can see both. Um, and then there's the picture in picture option. But if I play that, okay. Okay, so I guess it's not. Okay. That shows you, you know, what the picture in picture looks like. Um, one of the things that, that Kaltura is able to do is that it's actually able to create captions for you. Okay, and what you wanna do is from this screen under actions, there's this option to order captions. So I'm gonna select that, and then you click order captions. Now, it's gonna go across the screen here. So now captions have been ordered, and you can see that here it says that it's pending. Um, it might take, depending on the length of your video, it could be there within an hour, it could take longer. You know, I've seen, depending on some 
uh, videos, it might take 24 hours, depending on um, how many videos it's being processed. But these are what are called mechanical um, captions. And so it's not done by a, per a person, a human. This is done by software. So it's not 100% accurate. And you need to go back in and actually edit to make sure, edit those captions to make sure that they are accurate to what you're saying. Um, YouTube does the same thing. Those are mechanical, mechanical uh, captions. And again, the same thing, you need to go in and fix those, you know, edit them. Um, they say they're about 70, 80% accurate. Um, but, uh, but it's important, especially for the use if you're making your videos accessible, if you have a student who is um, hearing impaired, um, if the captions are incorrect, that puts them at a disadvantage. So you really want to try and go in and make those edits if possible. Okay. Um, and I think I can try and show you where the edits are. Um, if I find a video, let me go back to uh, more my media. Let's see if If I click this one, actions, nope, that's actually, I don't want that one. Let's go back, yes. There are two. Let's see, it's this edit here. Okay, if I click captions, edit captions. Okay, so you have a little screen of the video and you can see alongside here is, so you can actually watch the video and you can see how this is, I don't know how easy it is to see. Let me if I make this, larger but it's saying and I know I didn't say this and money goes to the slots now and share I mean that's totally inaccurate so you have to go in and listen to what is being said and you can change um, okay and you can save it and you're sure you want to save it? Yes. Okay. So that that's how you can change and edit the captions. Okay. Very, very simple. Um, so let's go back to my media and let's go here. And I'm going to go to the, this editor, the launch editor. And Kaltura gives you a very limited amount of editing tools. You can see down here, um, there's this little scissor that you can cut a piece out. So if you put this here, and if I click the scissors, so say if there's a section that you didn't want, now I can just press the delete on my keyboard and choose to, um, get rid of it, okay? Um, another option is the set in and then also the set out. So if you wanted to shorten your video, you can take a piece of it and just use this section. Um, so those are the two main editing options. And what I would do is Oh, that's interesting. I just got a message. Kaltura occasionally will update automatically, and I just got a message that the software updated. Um, I would always choose, if you choose save, it's going to take your original video and um, replace it. And I always like to choose save a copy. 
And so here's where you can choose it. This gives us say a clip of this video. If you create it. Okay, so what happens is the original video is still in place. And then it creates your, this is the original video, and this is the clip. This, these wheels turning shows that it's being processed, okay? But this is the clipped video that you can choose. So I think just as a best practice, if you wanna make sure that you, you know, that you've, you know, that you haven't made a mistake, or if you want to use more pieces of this later, to always choose to save a copy. Okay. Steve, mm -hmm. um, a question by Barbara is: the captions are optional, correct? Captions are optional, um, but it would be, but it's a good idea that. Um, if you're, if you want to have an accessible video for a course that you basically try and put that in. So it's strongly recommended that you put captions in, um, YouTube automatically puts them in eventually. There's not like a request for captions. I think it automatically puts them in, but for, um, but for, um, Kaltura, you would actually go in and you have to order recaptions. Here under caption request tells me what the status is and now it's still in process. So it's gonna take a while for this to actually, and it was only what, like a minute or two minutes, you know, of a, a video, um, okay. Right, and for the captioning, the, um, the universal design principles of learning advocate the captioning be included, and you can actually create a transcript of the captioning um, so that it benefits all students, not just those with you know, special needs. Okay. Um, let's go to um, the quiz feature function because we're getting... This always goes so quickly, so I want to try and cover. Okay, so here's our video. And up in the corner, there's this little cube that says quiz. So I'm going to select that. Okay. And it has a whole process that you can start that goes through, that helps you, guide you through. I'm going to click start. And these are the steps. There's a details. So if I click the down arrow, here's the name. Again, you can choose to change the name here. Um, at the beginning, there's it will insert a welcome message for your quiz video, the one that's specifically for a quiz. Right now, the welcome video says, says, in this video, you will be given a quiz, good luck. You can change this, you can add whatever, you know, any text that you want, you know, for that. Um, or if you don't want a, a welcome message, you could deselect it. But it might be helpful to at least have some welcome message. Um, you might say, this um, is not graded, if it's going to be just a self-test. Um, so you can add that. Um, some other options under the details, Al allow download of questions list. So do you want the viewers to download the questions before starting the quiz? You may not wanna do that, okay? Um, instructions, um, the following text will be displayed. All questions must be answered. The quiz will be submitted at the end. Um, this, this gives you the option it says yes or no on it, it doesn't give you the option to, to edit it. So, which I don't know why, it would be nice if you, they could edit some further instructions, but I guess you could put your any instructions in the welcome message, you know, if you don't want to use, okay. Um, underscores, this shows you, it allow multiple attempts, so you can choose students to take however many attempts, this isn't set for two, and the score to keep is the latest. Do you want to students, do you want to show the scores? Um, 
you know, uh, a thank you message will display after submitting just a thank you message, or do you want to show the scores? So it'll tell your students how well they did. Um, do you want to show the answers to your students? Um, yes or no. So that's a, these are options that you can, that you can choose. And then under experience, do you want that students to change answers so they can go back and change an answer before they submit it? Do you want to allow them to skip a question and be able to go back? Do you want them to, or do you want them not to skip? Okay. And then this option is no seeking forward so that they can't move forward for into the course, into the video without answering the question. So these are the, the options that you have, okay? So once you've made those options, you're ready to, to add the quiz questions. And basically you can go select play, listen to the video. Okay, now I'm gonna pause it and I'm gonna say, oh, this is where I wanna add a question. So here's this add a question and you have four options, okay? You can create a multiple choice, okay? And here's where you add a question. Um, okay, what color is the sky? I'm gonna say blue. Red. The first one is where it has this green mark is the is the correct answer. You can add additional responses or you can delete, choose to delete responses, and then save it. Okay. And you could see down below on this timeline it put a the question there. So I'm gonna continue further. Okay, I'm going to add another question. Here's true, false. So you can add um, um, okay, so the year is 2020. And I'm going to save that one. And I'm going to continue. Okay, and then another question. Here's a reflection point. So this is not meant for students to ask or answer, but it gives you an option to, you know, put some thoughts into students' minds about, you know, you might say in the next section, in the next minute of video, think about um, what you might do in, in responding to the question that was asked, you know. So that's a reflection point think about the next and I'm going to go look, click save but again this does not and again it puts the question down there it does not okay and the final one is an open-ended question and so this is where you can ask a question and then students have to respond um, Okay, and I'm gonna select save. Okay, so those are the four types of questions. You can preview it. Okay, there's the welcome screen, and this is where you could change. Um, it tells you that you have total two total attempts available. And you'll see, okay, there's the first true false question. The sky is blue, I'm gonna select that. Now I can move forward. Okay, the year is 2020, I'm gonna say false. Okay, and I'm gonna continue. Here's that reflection. It all it does is gives you the option 
to continue. You could choose to go back, but there's the, and then here's the open-ended, and this is where they would, um, uh, come on, very astute answering here. So that's a, and then they save it. So, so at the end, students would finish watching the video and okay up oh, now it's given you the option this to you can they can either review it or choose to submit the quiz okay um and it shows that you completed the quiz and your score is 50 percent well i answered the true false question wrong it doesn't record the true fault the uh, multiple the um, open answer question. So that's something that you have to go in. Um, they, you can take it again because you've given them an option or they can choose to say done. Oh, it's going through there. Anyway, I'm going to escape out of that. So that's that's the quiz function. And I'm going to select done. Okay, you could have it. You can edit the quiz. Okay, um, let's go to the my media. And what it's created there is it's took this original core, original video, and now it's made it. It's gave it the same name, but quiz. So it took a didn't overwrite the original video, okay? Um, let's go in and uh, just insert the video into your course. And again, there's multiple ways you can do it. Um, this is if this is use this is our the CTE or the folio template, which has built in pages. You don't have to use it, but it's you know again, it's something that is. A recommended because it it um, it's been created out of best practice and um, usability. I'm going to go and open this lecture page, but you can put it on your own lecture page. I'm going to select Edit HTML, and I'm going to get rid of this content, and I'm going to put the video right there. Put my cursor, select. Um, add Kaltura Media. Okay, so here's the video quiz. So I'm going to embed this, or you can do this for any of your other videos, but I'm going to say embed. And when it fills up, I'm going to say insert. and save and close. So this is, so here's the, the quiz video, but you can do that if for any video that if it's not a quiz. You could add these videos um, to, your, to an announcement, okay, a news item. So you can do news. So you say if you wanted to create a video of yourself, um, course intro. Again, this little box here, insert stuff, and you add, go down to add Kaltura Media, and the same thing, okay, and I'm going to put in um, this one, this video, so I click embed. and insert. And in this case, you want to publish it. So this gives you this, um, now this new video 
that students can see, okay? And again, now students have access to this, so you can do the same thing in a discussion forum, um, you know, to, uh, you know, if we open up this and then they start a thread, so students can do the same thing. They would just click and find their video at Kaltura Media, or the same thing from a Dropbox, okay? Um, if there's an assignment that they want to um, that they want to submit, okay. Uh, but I guess I have to go down, be enrolled at, since I'm in here as an instructor, so I can't do that. But and that's another way of doing it, okay. Um, and one more thing, just to make sure that. Um, you can, these are all videos created from within Kaltura, but you can here under media upload, you can upload a video that you've created um, from a cell phone that you've got, your own cell phone or another video camera that you have downloaded to your computer. You can then just search for the video that you're looking for. Um, this is, these are videos that are and it'll upload it. You can change the name. So this is a good thing if you want to, um, again, keep it private. Save. And now I'm going to go to my media. And again, this is now processing, so it's not available yet. But as soon as the, you get like a screen, then it'll be ready to, to attach to your, um, you know, to your course. Okay. Is there any questions from that beyond that from here? No questions yet. Steve, I added a link to the um, professional development badges pages if you okay. want to mention that. Yes, okay. Oh, wait just a minute, I'm sorry, there is a question. If there is a quiz and a video with one attempt, can a student go back and view the video after they have been through the video once? For one attempt, I believe they can review it. Um, they can go back and review it, um, but once it's submitted, then I don't believe that they have the option of That'll be, you know, that's a good question to ask whether they can see their video that they've actually submitted. I would think that they would. Yes, they should be able to see what they've submitted, but they, but they cannot, once they've submitted it, they cannot change anything. Okay. Okay. Um, the other thing that I just wanted to show you really quickly is this is Screencast-O-Matic. Some of you might be familiar with it. This is another one. Again, this is a free video software program. Um, it, you know, and you can start it. You basically, and you can use it for Chromebook, Mac, Windows. There's a free editor uh, recording. Once you launch it, it'll allow, you'll see a, a similar type of thing. Where should, where is it? It's not coming up. Oh, here it is. Oh, it went to the other. Why can't I get, here we go. Okay. So this is the, the tool uh, menu for the, so you have the same thing, screen, webcam, or both. Okay. Um, and the la the other one I just want to screencastify. Again, this is only for Chrome, the Chrome browser. Um, again, you need to install the uh, the extension to your Chrome browser, and again, it gives you a very similar um, recording option. Okay. And let's show you. Um, 
I do have the, this is the badge program that, um, that we have. This, uh, this workshop is counts towards the teaching with technology workshop. There are th three different programs. Um, once you uh, reach four different workshops, then you can, you'd submit, um, well, you submit an action plan for each workshop. Um, the link to the action plan is on our website. You can, you know, and then once you've completed all four workshops and completed an action plan for each one, you can submit an act, a, a capstone reflection, and um, then you can get a badge for the, uh, which can be used as part of your professional development. So um, this information is all on the CT website. So you can look under professional development and this will, information will be un, under badge. I think it's actually in it. Um, if I look under Georgia Southern, it might actually have its own. Right, I shared the link in the comments oh, you did? too. Okay. And we can send it with a follow-up email too. Right. Okay, I'm gonna stop presenting. One more question. Okay. Okay, is it easy to link video quiz grades back to the folio grade book? They're automatic. Um, let me, okay, let me go and share my presentation again. Um, okay, let me go back to here. So once grade, grade, so I'm going to go to the grade book. Um, once uh, one student has taken the quiz, then you'll have a column that is a, becomes automatically populated with in, in your grade book, okay? And you can choose to make this as part of your grade, or, you know, as part of the grade, or you can choose to just make this as like a self-test and to monitor. Um, it's not showing up the video that I did because that I just took because it only works for a student. You know, if I used a student um, access, it'll populate. And then it, you'll actually see their scoring down here. It might say, for me, it might say 50%. But you can actually go back to um, the analytics. Let's go to my media and if I go to this quiz, And under actions here, there's this analytics uh, option. And this is where you can see how each student, okay, because it, a student didn't take this, um, but it would show, um, it would show how many times, you know, how many times it, you know, um, it was played, the number of unique viewers. It'll also tell you by student, the average completion rate. It'll tell you how far that they went through. So if there was a student under new unique viewers, it'll you'll actually see um, the actual student name and how they responded. So for a open-ended question, this is where you would need to go to find what they answered, okay? Um, it won't populate into the grade book. Um, and in the grade book, it'll only show whether they got a true, false, or a multiple choice answer question right or wrong. But you'll have to go back into the analytics to see what the answer was that they chose, okay? But at least it gives you this option that you can see um, what it is that they did, okay? Anything right. else? Okay. No, let me. Um, let's go back. Let me stop presenting. 
and I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. Come on. And...